watching and listening to Conscious Evolution Media. Shifting global consciousness at ConsciousEvolutionMedia.com. Are you in the entertainment industry? If you answered yes and you want to promote yourself, your passion, and profession, check out Creative Independent Artist Magazines at CIAartists.com. Endorsed by Kids Talk Foundation Worldwide. Today's Are you in the entertainment industry? If you answered yes and you want to promote yourself, your passion, and profession, check out Creative Independent Artist Magazines at CIAartists.com. Endorsed by Kids Talk Foundation Worldwide. Today's podcast is brought to you by Kids Talk Foundation, a global nonprofit organization providing youth advocacy, television programming, and training services in the United States, along with comprehensive medical and educational services for the developing world, most recently in Kenya, Africa, where Kids Talk Foundation provides a feeding program, medical care, and educational services to over 1,300 young people each day. Please help our youth and place your donation. Go to www.kidstalk.org. Welcome to the Mind, Body, and Soul Show on Real Coaching Radio Network. How would you like to attempt to demystify with us the realms of the mind, body, and soul to bring you a more holistic and balanced way of living? Healthier in all realms of the psyche, the spirit, and the body. Here is your host and executive producer, Coach Steve Toth. Welcome, everybody, to the Mind, Body, and Soul Show on this beautiful Thursday afternoon. I am your host, Coach Steve Toad, and also the founder of Conscious Evolution Media. And our special guest today is uh, Vari Gordon Preston, and she's joining us from the UK. And she is a sea change coach, and I'm sure we're going to find out much more in just a moment. But before we do, welcome, Vari, to the show. Hi, Steve. It's great to be here. <laughs> it's great. It's great to have you. So, I have a traditional question that I've been asking now for nine years, and this is how it goes. If I took away all the titles that has anybody ever called you, including Sea Change Coach, what's left? Who is really Bari Gordon Preston? Who is she? <laughs> what a wonderful question. Um, I've, I've got quite an abstract answer. F- flow, water, change, love, enjoyment. I knew it. <laughs> because <laughs> you see at the beginning when I when I did this show, a lot of people just froze because <laughs> we had a lot more people not knowing who they really are. And uh, these days, I'm attracting lots of people that know exactly who they are. So thank you for that great answer, because it is really who you are. And I happen to be a Pisces, so this is not a relationship show. So, But the reason I say that is because I love water. <laughs> Correct, so, as do I. <laughs> so, you, so you must love water, right? And what sign are you? I'm cancer. Okay, great. <laughs> so, so. But it's a water sign as well. <laughs> yes, it is. So, tell our viewers a little bit about how did you, how did you get to where you are today, and especially where you have gotten to in the last couple of years. There is a, there is a storyline there that I'm sure our viewers are very interested in, so am I. (laughs) Gosh, where to start? Um, Well, I suppose a a sensible place to start would be I was working as a graphic designer and I saved up some money and I went traveling um, just purely to have some fun and see a bit more of the world. No intention of changing my life whatsoever. Uh, had a lot of fun and that's what met... you thought <laughs> exactly <yeah. laughs> but the universe had a different plan right yeah indeed doesn't it always uh, <laughs> met a great set of people and 
they could just not stop talking about scuba diving and I'd sort of vaguely heard of scuba diving but that was no, that was it I've not really thought about it very much but they you know you should have seen their faces when they talked about it they they lit up it was like a, uh, just a wonderful spark inside um, and the way it obviously made them feel I thought well do you know what I've got to give this a go because something that good has to be tried once so I gave it a go I loved it <laughs> and I just knew that my life had changed forever and that I wasn't going to be going back to be a graphic designer. Um, I was going to retrain and, and get into fish science. Um, so that's kind of what I did, except when I got back to London, you know, it's all very well to make these plans when you're out traveling and it's beautiful and sunny and warm and you're out of your usual comfort zone and usual environment. I came back to London and I was just stuck, you know, how am I going to make this happen? Because I hadn't studied science um, since, you know, early on in school, really. I'd, I'd, I was always interested in art, so no science for me. So I, I was a bit stuck, really. What, what do I do with what I've got and how do, I, how do I move forward? And a friend of mine was having some life coaching. And I thought, well, I'll give that a go too. The diving worked out really well, so let me try out the life coaching. And it was incredibly helpful. Um, the, the the coach was just so supportive. I, I didn't know what to expect. Um, and she didn't tell me what to do. She just brought out the best in me. And I thought, I love this process. And I'm going to see where it takes me. And it's taken me to some brilliant places over the years, sort of internally and externally. So I did change my career. With the help of my coach, I um, leapt over all the barriers that I, that, that I had in my, that I, you know, created for myself, basically. And so I was able to change my life and change my career. And every now and again, I'd sort of, I'd, um, you know, when something cropped up in life, I'd, I'd have another go at coaching and often working with a different coach. And I thought, I love this process and I'd like to do it someday. But of course that thought went to the back of my mind because I was focused on a fish science career, marine biology, <laughs> that was my thing. Yeah, yeah And it. I made progress in that, but you know life again threw me a curveball. So um, I think it was about four years ago, I went through a very difficult year with, um, I was made redundant and then I had, I experienced sort of four or five bereavements and it was really as I was putting my life back together from that and, and thinking, well, what on earth do I do now? Um, I connected with the law of attraction and it was through that that I remembered this spark and this connection with coaching. And that's when I decided to train as a coach and the rest is history. Uh -huh, got it. All right, so, so you did a real fantastic job uh, telling your story and make it very positive and very very cool but he, I know better <laughs> <laughs> I don't know at all but I know better so would you be willing to share the breakdown or breakdowns because the reason I'm asking you is when you are able to share that with our viewers, that really what touches people's heart. Because people are having breakdowns all over the world every day. And it seems to me, from doing this kind of work now for more than 30 years, is that that is what gives access. That is the opening in terms of how people become aware of themselves and who they really are and that's the key and that's the connection to their passion and that's how they get to the place where you are right now but the journey is not that pretty <laughs> it's so like you, be you were willing? sitting there watching me when all this was happening <laughs> <laughs> <How do you laughs> okay so us as human beings I, I found out that we're not that different we're very much the same <laughs> It's just the stories are different and the people that we get to touch on the way are different. But but our journeys and experiences are very, very similar. 
Yes. So are you up to it? Yes, yes. Go go for it. Ask ask me anything you want. Okay, so share with us a breakdown that you had where you realized that you did not want to really be a fish person. Like that's okay. like not your life purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Might be your hobby, but that's not what really turns you on. Well, it's interesting that you say that because in many ways it, it, it still does actually. And the reason I call myself um, or a marine the sea biologist. change coach it, and yeah, the reason yeah. my, my website is your sea change life is because there are so many wonderful lessons and examples from the sea itself and from all the fantastic creatures that live in it mm -hmm. um, whether we're talking about uh, clownfish that people may know from finding Nemo so they like a mm -hmm. very very tiny bit of the ocean and they stay in this tiny bit and they they never venture out of that now for clownfish that's perfect <laughs> for humans less so <laughs> Or yeah. um, you can contrast them with the whales, some of which start out near the South Pole and migrate to Canada and back and do these amazing journeys and face these hardships. Um, so I still am a fish person, very much so. Um, it's just that I have incorporated that marine biology learning or that fish ecology learning into my coaching. Yeah, I got that. Um, <laughs> And it's very you use the word, it's very apparent. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's very apparent on your website that that you made the correlation beautifully actually and you're presenting it in in a very what do I want to say? And you may or may not realize this, but you the way you did it is you because it's so unique. I I never seen anybody and and I told you that I've interviewed thousands of coaches right and done more than 13,000 shows but shows but I have never seen anybody doing what you actually just did because what it does it interrupts people it interrupted me when I went to your website I went like oh wow <laughs> <laughs> this is this is so different <laughs> because you know I, I'm, I'm used to seeing you know all coaches say the same things you know and uh, pretty much and and you used a different way to relate to coaching and, and you used a different way for people to connect the business of coaching and their own lives to what would it be like if they worked with somebody like you that knows how the oceans, the waters and the fishes work. It's a very interesting correlation. Like even when you said, have you recently experienced having the wind taken out of your business or life or relationship? Even that interrupted me because because it's not the way we normally speak about it. D do you get it? Yes, and, and, and that was very deliberate. Um, mm -hmm. th there are some wonderful phrases in the English language that are very powerful I feel and a lot of them are to do with um, sorry to be all parochial but a lot of them to do with the British naval history so you know the, the things that the <laughs> British Navy got up to so lots of those are yeah. in our language certainly in England and I think um, many of them more internationally as well so excuse me <clears throat> um, and also one of the prime reasons for doing it is that when we are in a situation, when we're going through something, <laughs> or um, when we're reaching for something, it can be quite hard to look at it dispassionately because, our, after all, you know, we are creatures of feeling and emotion. And so to look at things very clearly can be very difficult. And that's where examples from the sea. Or, or other examples um, come in very handy because people get a fresh take on things and they can see how um, what they're doing or, or what they want to do how it relates to something else and that can sort of show a path 
into a, a brighter future, for instance. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. So before we continue, I just want to check in with you about something. We had a, a wonderful coach from Estonia that's, that was going to join us for the second half hour. And her internet went completely out. So she had no other choice than cancel with us. So I wanted to check in because it makes a difference how I continue on the show if you want to spend the entire hour. I'm certainly willing to do that with you. Or you want us to end in about 10 minutes. Gosh, well, I, I do feel for that lady because I'm, you know, I'm so thrilled to be here today. It's such a fantastic opportunity. <laughs> so, she, oh, poor thing. She, she must be uh, fed up. Um, thank you ever so much for the wonderful offer. Um, I actually have an appointment with my husband <laughs> after this. <laughs> so, That's would it be helpful? All right. <laughs> Well, um, he's a teacher and I'm a coach running my own business. So unless we make appointments, you know, the time just goes by. <laughs> uh, but if it's helpful, I could do another 15 minutes if that would be. Oh, sure. Useful it's for up you to you. It's up to you. Yeah, it's up to you. I'm actually doing this for you, not, not for me. Okay. So great. Yeah. So we'll end, we'll end uh, at quarter to the hour. Okay. So. Fantastic. Getting back to what I was asking you, which is a breakdown. I didn't get mm. one, and that's okay. I'm not going to pound it, because I know better. <laughs> no, we did, we, did, we did sort of move away from that. There was something that you you asked, and um, and I, I went down a different channel. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so, yeah. yes, breakdown. Um, well, when I hear that word, I suppose... I mean, I have faced many challenges in my life without wanting to sound too, too depressing. Um, okay, so the breakdown, let me clarify. Let yeah, me clarify. yeah, thank so, you, that would help. Just so that our, our viewers know too. So, so Vary, a breakdown is actually not a bad thing. It's mm -hmm. a good thing. And it's a good thing because the only way that I know, there could be other ways, I just don't know it, to experience a breakthrough is to have a breakdown first. <laughs> yes, and funnily enough, I, what, um, one or two people used that word with me when, when I had that year that I told you about. In fact, it wasn't even a year, it was nine months with redundancy and five bereavements. Um, and somebody used that word to me. And I don't know, I suppose maybe my personal opinion is that there's a negative association to that word. And I said, mm -hmm. in, in a moment of clarity, I said, actually, I think I'm having a really healthy reaction to lots of loss in nine months and so yeah I like your interpretation and uh, which is you know a breakthrough coming from it so is there a particular yeah. question that you have you have about that well, or is it's like it's like the, it? the bigger the breakdown the bigger the breakthrough there's a correlation yeah so so the specific question is what is it in your life at the time when you were making a commitment to becoming a marine biologist and were you going to get a PhD in it or a master's? <laughs> yeah, Something I actually like had a place lined up, a uh, yeah. funded place in New Zealand. Yes, yeah, funny you should ask. <laughs> yeah, so what, so what is it about what happened in your life that that you shifted course for something that you, and that's just my understanding, that you were about to dedicate your life to. What happened? The losses that I went through. Um, Can you be more specific? What what those are? Oh, sorry. Would you be sorry. The the, the yeah. being being laid off from my job or, or redundancy, as we say in the UK. Um, that that was a big loss because um, I was working at a charity that I, I really loved and I was so happy there. Um, but I didn't realise that I was actually giving over so much of my identity to this job or or um, building up my identity from the job maybe would be a better way of, of putting it. Um, I, I didn't realise how much that had happened until some time after. And then when I went through the bereavements, um, losing two friends, family member, a friend's sister, and then finally um, some uh, someone who's very beloved to me. And then I just 
I'd always sort of paid lip service to, oh yeah, family's important, friends are important, love is important. I thought I meant it, but I think it wasn't until I'd, I'd lost these, these people that I really meant it. So um, that was what I really took from that. And so home became much more important to me and my relationships became much more important to me and um, oh. so I think the piece is missing the piece that's missing is where were you going to become a marine biologist where geographically where? do you mean yes yes um, in uh, at a university in New Zealand oh okay On the so other that's side a of few the miles away <laughs> from home yeah <laughs> Yeah. I don't even mean home England because I, I actually grew up abroad. I think what I mean by home is uh -huh. those who are important to me and sh sh uh, giving and receiving love. That That's what I mean by home, I think. Oh, okay. Okay, got it. Okay, so in New Zealand, you were all by yourself without any of your relatives or friends? Uh, well, no, my, my husband would have moved uh, over there with me. We, we'd have gone together. Uh, but yes, okay, it would have been the two of us without any friends or without a network. Okay. All right, so got it. So, so the reason I wanted to explore this a little bit and what I want the viewers to get out of this conversation is that sometimes we lose our job and we get very upset about it and we don't necessarily understand, okay? And and that's okay because in, in, in reality, what's really happening is the universe is moving us along. The universe interrupts us in mysterious ways. <laughs> <laughs> One of which is we get fired <laughs> and then we go, we all go crazy and go, I don't understand. I really love this job, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. But there is something better that's right around the corner, right? Absolutely, yes, absolutely. And it, it um, uh, I'm going to use a non-fish metaphor. It's like, I think, well, for me anyway, I think it was like being a baby bird kicked out the nest. You know, a baby uh. bird has to leave the nest to take flight to find food, to meet its mate, to enjoy the sunshine, to experience the wind under its wings. It's never going to do that if it, if it stays in the yeah, nest. Yeah, yeah. So and what I'm hearing yeah, there... Sometimes it does take a kick. <laughs> yeah, so, so what I'm hearing there also is that maybe we have to let go of something before we can receive something. Yes, yes. And... Um, you can choose to let things go out of your life or you can have them taken out of your life but um, something else will come into your life mm. yeah mm. and um, I think so many people you know they're doing jobs they don't really enjoy and for many of them when they if, if they get made redundant you know it's horrible at the time and then some months later you know they look back on it and they're cheering they're jumping up and down yay it happened and look, what, <laughs> look where I am and now they say and they might say, well, that was the best thing that happened to me. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. I've heard so many people say that. <laughs> and I, I say it also. Yeah. yeah. Although, don't get me wrong, I loved it. And I'm still in contact with some of the, of the people there. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, I understand. All right. So in terms of your coaching, let's just focus um, there for a little bit. So you went and got, did you get certified as a coach? Yes. I did. I, okay, I got a diploma in coaching and uh -huh. a diploma in neurolinguistic programming, which I hate the title oh, okay, of because yeah. it's such a brilliant thing that's so helpful and practical. Yeah. <laughs> and it's well, such a complicated name that most people go, what the heck is that? <laughs> yes, yes. If you say so NLP, I, I, they want to know what it stands for. And then when you tell them what it stands for, and then they go, <laughs> what? <laughs> I know, and, and you know, sometimes I can't even detangle what it stands for and the meaning of it, but I don't really care because I know that um, when I use yeah. it for myself and when I use it with my coaches, it's just really practical and really helpful. So I love it, whatever it's called. Okay, awesome. So, so you must have some really good um, knowledge, wisdom, and experience in terms of 
how what people make up in their lives when when we were young about some form of hurt that we experience that we create this this idea and we take it on to ourselves like things like I'm no good I am I am not worthy <laughs> I am a nobody and the list goes on we can probably come up with thousands of thousands of things that we humans make up in that in that time of hurt where we don't know how to how to resolve it in terms of what we're feeling and we don't know how to blame other people yet because the other people haven't taught us the concept of blame yet so we take it on and we don't just take it on for the next minute or the next hour we take in take we take it on for a long time in terms of our lives and then so you do that kind of work right yes um obviously there's, there's a, a difference between um psy psychiatry psychology counseling therapy etc all of those things and coaching so um at the coaching end of those things i definitely help people with that sort of thing um and often like the way you put so, it so so how do you so, help how do you help sorry. them how do you help them so so here's my let me let me boil my question down to something mm -hmm. very simple so and, and this is like a message I have to the entire coaching industry life coaching industry <laughs> how, how do you as professional professionals and I and I used to do life coaching I I moved on to media but how do you as professionals are able to coach people when when the majority of people out there are not ready to receive your coaching because they are still committed to this idea that I was just this concept I was just sharing with you they still in the place of I am not worthy <laughs> that the view of life is from that place and they haven't healed it so how do yes. you help those people that's a great question. Um, well, firstly, I just need to say I cannot speak for the whole of the coaching industry. Um, I understand. I'm only going to speak I can. For myself. <laughs> <laughs> I've been at it way too long. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm just going to speak for, for my philosophy of way, my philosophy of coaching, and, and the way I okay. coach. Okay. Great. Um, the way you put it, I'm I'm not worthy, and uh, you know, fantastic, clear statements like that. Um, I think some people are aware that they feel like that, and I think many others are not aware. So uh, dealing with I am not worthy in one go is like trying to swallow a great white shark in one meal. <laughs> it's gonna be very difficult. Um, but perhaps if if you are minded to, you know, you, you could take a little bite out of the shark, and and do it <laughs> bit by bit. And I think it's those daily actions and behaviours and mindsets. Because I, I m my understanding is that a belief is a thought that we've had many times, and as you say, we've committed to. So if we've done that, we can commit to other thoughts. So I just help, you know, I just plant seeds of other thoughts and I, and I get people to look at things in a, in a different way. So I don't know, maybe somebody has said to them, oh, you're no good at so-and-so and they've such and such and they've taken that message on board. So I just get people to look at it differently. Okay, so maybe you're not good at that, but what's another reason, you know, that might have happened? And, you know, once right. people start to stop and think about it, then all sorts of possibilities come into it come into being and um, people I, I, I like to get people actively working on their beliefs and awesome. changing their beliefs does that what, what other question? tools oh yeah 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 no, no, you did that real well so what other tools do you use or modalities that do you use in your coaching practice other than NLP do you use hypnotherapy 
Um, I don't. I'm a big fan of it, and I do recommend. So, so I don't do the hypnotherapy myself because I'm not trained in that. But I do recommend certain recordings. I, I'm I'm a big fan of binaural recordings. Um, it's kind of has some similarities to hypnotherapy. Sort of works directly on brain waves. So again, I would recommend people to that. And I'm also a big fan of EFT and tapping. So I, I make sure that people know about those sort of things as well okay, so, so it really okay. depends i don't have like a set agenda i don't say okay first we're going to do this nlp and then we're going to do that yeah it really depends on what the person wants to achieve and what the barriers might be for them and then you know i'll bring in different techniques different ideas different metaphors different ways of helping them understand for themselves what's going on i you know i don't pretend to know what's going on for somebody else i just help them shine a light and help them understand and move forward mm -hmm. okay uh, fantastic all right so from your point of view what's the difference or is there a difference between having people be positive and have a positive attitude all the time versus being authentic What's the difference? Wonderful, wonderful question. I love it because it uh, certainly to me it just feels so unhelpful <laughs> when when somebody j just blithely says, "Oh, be positive," and and that's kind of like that's it. That, that's your help for me. Um, if so it's that easy, is... if it's that easy, everybody <laughs> would be doing it. <laughs> you wouldn't need to read a book. You wouldn't need to, yeah. uh, you know, have coaching or listen to hypnotherapy. Exactly. You would just snap your fingers and it would be done. Um, that said, I'm open to the possibility of that happening. <laughs> um, yeah, authenticity is so Me too. so important. I think we are um, sort of covered in layers and layers and layers of, of messages about how we should be, and I hate that word "should." Um, that it can be hard to dig ourselves out from under those layers, and, and that's usually the starting point with with my coaching to to you know dig oneself out and swim up to the to the sunlit area of the ocean uh, so okay. authenticity is important that said in fact authenticity is crucial that said um i think it's important to feel feelings and and not run away from them it's not certainly for me i don't necessarily find that an easy thing um i have to practice being with my feelings and so the, those are two aspects. And then I guess a third aspect, and I, I, I do feel this is important, and it's something that I endeavor to do in my life as well, which is to look at some positives, to actively take steps to feel a little bit better, to work on having positive expectations rather than, rather than assuming the worst. You know, um, that's just a habit. So habits can be changed. So, you know, somebody could go from um, expecting the worst to expecting the best, for instance. Right. So what I'm hearing there also is I, I listen to people very closely. <laughs> and I'm attempting to teach this as well on the network. So because I'm listening to you very attentively, I, I don't have a mind chatter going on when I'm listening to you. And what opens up for me in listening to you is things between what you say that you're not actually saying but I can get it okay does that make sense could you give me an example I'm, I'm somebody I'm gonna who give you one examples yeah I'm gonna give you one right now so what I also heard there between the lines is that what you are helping people to do is to identify which beliefs that they have took on for themselves in their lives that actually isn't theirs. They're somebody else's. Very definitely. And not only that, it doesn't work for them anymore. Yes. And then you teach yes, them it's... and you teach them how to get rid of those beliefs because it's not working. How do you teach them to get rid of it? And how easy is it? How easy is it? Mm. I think I mean I think it varies for different people, and I think um, it probably varies according to how much effort you're willing to put into it, and if you are 
prepared to make an effort on a daily basis or if you're somebody who says oh I haven't got time to do that you know and I you know I appreciate nobody's perfect um, including me especially me um, but I do feel that I actually perfect. say I actually say we are all perfect including our imperfections exactly <laughs> we, this is so true we are all perfect on our imperfections and I love that I oh. love it because it, 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 it combines the, the the learning point and the, the positivity as well so, so that's great oh. um, I suppose to some extent you could say it depends on how how attached somebody is to a belief how willing they are to consider having a new belief and, and how ready they are to you know bite bullet <laughs> And uh -huh. So do you do you push your clients? Do you do you motivate them to 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 get outside of their comfort zone? Because I, I I feel that most of this has to do with <laughs> it's kind of funny. For me, life coaching boils down to this. Are you willing to get off the couch <laughs> and do something or aren't you? If you're not you're not really you're not ready stay on the couch yeah absolutely yes so how do you um, how do you push yes, them I mean, how do you push I'm, your clients I'm very supportive and um i you know i love to see people having successes even what sometimes we might label the small things um I, I love those and I love to I love to give praise and I love to be supportive and I love to encourage them to look at the steps they have taken and the progress they have made but I would not be doing my job and I would be taking people's money under false pretenses if I didn't from time to time um, be a little bit in people's faces basically <laughs> and say okay yeah. um, stop I'm gonna hold you to this you know perhaps if somebody is um, you know they're in a habit of, of talking negatively about themselves and so there I might be quite um, firm <laughs> <laughs> and don't that, let them off the hook uh, right? yeah no that, because if I'm letting them off the hook all the time I mean you, you know anybody can have a chat with their friends or their family and say oh I hate my job Da, 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 and let off some steam and feel better. We're great justifiers. We're great needed. justifiers, aren't, aren't we? We're yeah. Most of us yeah. human oh, beings yeah. Yeah. have a master's degree in justifying everything we do. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. I'm too old. I can't afford it. Uh -huh. I don't have time. I'm too young. I'm too busy. They depend on me. If I don't do it, nobody will, and so on. Uh -huh. And so on, yes. All right, so we're coming up to uh, the quarter to the hour, so there is a couple of minutes left. So I'd like to give you the opportunity to share with the viewers how you can be contacted to get this fantastic coaching that you do, especially for people that are attracted to water and to fishes. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I know that I'm having a great time with you because we have that in common. I love the ocean <laughs> and water, period. Uh, yeah, many people do. I mean, you know, scientifically there are sort of chemicals that are given off by the sea that energize us and, and lift our mood. And, you know, many people will know bathing in different seawater can be um, so good for your skin. And then you've got you've got the, the wide open skies and the, the breeze and that just lifts your mood. And so, yeah, I, I think the... the the sea, the beach, the coast is a healthy place in so many ways. <laughs> right. So share with us your contact information that you would like to have people know about because the show is going to be archived. It's going to be all over the internet. So it's going to be podcasted on iTunes, on YouTube, you name it. Fantastic. Um, well, uh, a starting point, if you would like to know a bit more about me, would be my website, which is your sea change life dot com and on there I write a twice weekly blog that's um, t filled with sea soaked life tips if you are ready to contact me more directly and um, I welcome that as well 
then I am Coach Vari on Skype. And I should just say Vari is spelt M H A I R I. I'm also on Twitter as Coach Vari and I'm on Facebook. Uh, it's facebook.com slash your sea change life. Fantastic. You've been absolutely awesome, Vari, and I had a very good time with you and I experienced this interaction with you, this dialogue to be like two minutes, which is the sign <laughs> that I use that we are both awake and conscious and we're connected because <laughs> we were in the present. The, this is true. The time has just flown by and it's been such a privilege for me to talk with you and such a pleasure. Thank you so much. And thank you yeah, to thank everybody you so who's listening or watching. And have a fantastic date with your husband. Thank you. Will do. Very important. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Bye. All right. Thank you. Bye. See you guys uh, next week. Same place, same time. Always on Thursday afternoon at 2 o'clock mountain and that would make it four o'clock eastern and of course one o'clock pacific thank you all see you next week today's podcast is brought to you by obesityhotline.com the silent killer providing support and encouragement in the prevention of this rising epidemic featuring the body by vi challenge is there a quick answer to the question go to www.obesityhotline.com you're watching and listening to Conscious Evolution Media, shifting global consciousness at ConsciousEvolutionMedia.com.